own horse is a big step. There is so much responsibility. There's so much to learn. But there actually is a way that you can have part of the experience of having your own horse without necessarily all of the responsibility. So in this video, we're going to talk about leasing, how leasing can be a great stepping stone to owning, or maybe all that you'll ever do is lease. I'm going to talk about the different types of leases. I'm going to talk about the benefits of leasing and also what the drawbacks are. I'm Callie. You're watching this video here on the weekly show at CRK Training, where I share riding tips, training advice, and horse care ideas. The biggest benefit of leasing is that it gives you more freedom to work with a horse on your own. It gives you more of that experience of owning your own horse, but without all the responsibility of being the, the sole caretaker or the person that's primarily responsible for the horse. Now, of course, there's many different types of leases and different ways that they're negotiated. And I'm gonna talk about three of the main types of leases here next. The first one is a free lease. And this is where you don't pay anything for the lease, but you do have some responsibility for um, usually parts of the horse's care. And this can vary greatly. Some free leases, you'll be responsible for all of the care. You might be responsible for board, for any um, feed that the horse needs, and also for emergency veterinary care. Now there's also a paid lease. Most of the time in paid leases, you're also responsible for the horse's care, but you're also paying to lease the horse. Paid leases are more typical when there's a horse that is a seasoned show horse. And oftentimes paid leases are done when someone wants a horse to go out and be able to campaign in the show season. Maybe they want that higher level competitive horse they don't necessarily have the funds to go out and purchase that horse, but by leasing them, they're able to be really competitive, have that caliber of horse, and have that experience. There's also something that is often called the half lease. And this usually means that the horse is still being used by the owner, maybe being used in a lesson program, or being used by another person that's leasing. And you just have riding privileges or essentially time privileges with the horse. Most of the time in half leases, the owner keeps the responsibility of the costs of the horse and the person that's leasing just gets that time. Oftentimes in half leases, there is a paid component. So either the person that's leasing will pay um, for the time spent with the horse or they might pay a portion of the horse's uh, care and expenses. These are just three types of leases. The way that leases can be negotiated are really limitless. And that's why it is really important that whenever you go into a lease situation, whether it's a free lease, whether it's a paid lease, a half lease, any other type of situation, that you have in writing exactly what your responsibilities are, what you're expected to pay for, the time that you're gonna have, and the freedom that you're gonna have with the horse. Biggest tip is to discuss all the different scenarios that you could think of that could happen and have it in writing. It's so much easier to do this when there's not the stress of an injured horse or there's not the frustration of showing up at the barn expecting to be able to spend time with your lease horse and maybe someone else is riding them or they're in a lesson. The biggest drawbacks of leasing is that you often don't have total control over the horse that you're leasing. And sometimes that can be frustrating. If you would like to change the way that the horse is being managed, maybe you wish that they could have a different type of a feeding program, you wish that they could have more turnout, or you even wish that you could move them to a different barn, you might not have that freedom with a lease horse. And also, if you're doing a paid lease, of course the drawback is that you're paying to use the horse and you don't actually have ownership in the end. To sum it all up, leases are a great way if you want the experience of having more time with a horse, having more freedom, if you want kind of that stepping stone to think about owning your own horse in the future. Leases are also great if you want a, a higher caliber competitive horse to go out and campaign in the show season. And leases are also really good if you just want to be able to spend a little bit more time um, with maybe your favorite horse at the barn, um, with a horse that you can just have that 
that time together that's outside of a lesson and maybe you never want to own. Make sure that you know exactly what the terms of your lease are and be aware that leases are negotiable and there's many different ways that you can talk to the horse's owner about how to negotiate that lease. Just make sure that it's clear and ideally that you've got it in writing before you go into the lease situation. So now I would love to hear from you in the comments. Scroll down and just leave a comment with what your experience has been with leasing. If you've leased a horse, what type of a lease was it? How did it go? And do you have any suggestions, anything that you would do differently if you were starting that lease over or if you were talking to someone that was just thinking about going into a lease? I'm really looking forward to hearing um, your experiences on this one. Your experiences, if you have leased before or if you have questions about leasing, are gonna be really valuable to others here in the community. To leave your comment, make sure that you go to crktrainingblog.com. That's where the best conversation is. And there's many other free videos for you there as well.